humanity. And there are minority factions that want to do that, want to kill the surface dwelling humans. They, they call them surface dwellers and then supplant the surface dwellers with a gene pool Mars colony that they've been developing on Mars of elite humans with super, superior DNA that they'll just bring on after they've gotten rid of us all surface dwellers. And I think that just yesterday, a woman came forward uh, with a leak. She was a former NASA employee who saw back in 1979, a person walking around on Mars. Of course, the, the US and the UK have had bases on Mars and personnel on Mars at the elite level since at least the 1960s. Alfred characterizes a control system striving through all means possible to maintain its hold over humanity. These controllers appear to be using technology far beyond that which the average human conceives as possible. In considering such notions that stretch our reality, it's important not only to consider the source and the information, but also take into account the confined nature of what we've been taught is possible taught incidentally by the control system itself. Could it be that we've been trapped in a matrix reality constructed to limit our conceptualization of what's possible? Could this have been done to elicit an automatic reaction of disbelief to any data that conflicts with the reality taught in schools and then reinforced by the media? Is science fiction a mechanism to categorize ideas into what is fact and what is fantasy? Could it be an instrument designed to teach us what to believe and what to disbelieve, thereby enabling the controllers to hide advanced technology, technology which they use to maintain control, and then hide it in plain sight? Certainly we are schooled to the notion that we live in a physical reality governed by the laws of Newtonian science. But this notion defines a particularly rigid set of parameters for what is feasible, for what is real. Cemented in the notion of physicality, we are incapable of grasping anything outside of a seemingly material world. Could this be the controller's greatest tool of suppression? Denying us the knowledge of who we are? what we are, and the rules that govern the omniverse. This confines us in a prison without bars, a narrow range of possibilities outside of which the controllers can operate with impunity. Without being able to break free from the stunted vision of what's achievable, we remain ensnared in a slave-like existence, subject to the horrors, isolation, separation, wars, and limitations which they choose for us. Later in the interview, Dr. Weber reconceptualizes a reality, a reality in which many more possibilities abound, and perhaps freedom from the matrix can be found. Is time a construct? Well, it's a dimension. We now live in what's called a time-space hologram. We are inside a virtual reality. It's like if we're inside the virtual reality that you yourself would watch through a pair of Google glasses. And people can read my most recent book called The Dimensional Ecology of the Omniverse. It's the a product of five years research that was started by a request from Oxford, from Oxford University Press, which is a division of Oxford. And it's perfectly scientifically, all of the evidence there is based on replicable scientific experiments. What we are in now, yourself as Richie, myself as Alfred, we can call ourselves avatars. All of us humans, all of those listening to this program, all of us 7 billion on this planet, what we are is we are time-space avatars 
inside of a time-space virtual reality that's a time-space hologram where time is one of the dimensions. It's composed of multiple timelines. The good news is this, that as of December 21st, 2012, the holographic timeline that humanity has been on has shifted from, I would call, a duality consciousness-based timeline in which you can call a catastrophic timeline to a positive timeline. And that's why all these end-of-the-world scenarios have not occurred and why all the false flags that they're trying to get off the ground, like World War III, they don't have traction for because as of December 21st, 2012, the, the portal, the interdimensional portal at the core of our universe has started to broadcast waves of unity consciousness, which is we are one. Duality consciousness is I win, you lose. And that's what the matrix has been operating under. And as of December 21st, 2012, it shifted to unity consciousness. So any plans, organization, attempts, thoughts, you know, that are trying to impose du duality consciousness will not prosper. And individuals, thoughts, organizations that are in unity consciousness gain traction on this new holographic timeline. The other good news is that this being a virtu virtual reality, and I being the avatar Alfred, you being the avatar Richard, R Richie, we have our seven billion fellow avatars here. Each of us is co connected to a non-local soul, which is based in what we call the interlife dimension. That soul can be leading multiple lives in multiple virtual realities, not only as humans, but they can be le leading it as, as intelligent fish or other forms. So this is a very advanced form. And what souls do in the interlife also between lives is that they have very important functions co-creating the universes that they incarnate into. There's a recent paper by two scientists at Stanford showing that they were asked how many universes are, are there in the multiverse? And the response was, there are so many, it's humongous. And the human mind can't even comprehend, but if you went to write that number out in 12-point type, that number would be more than 260 million miles long. Wow, that's that's many yeah. universes there are in the multiverse. So we are in a hum in a humongous in a humongous reality, each of which had contained so many intelligent civilizations that we couldn't comprehend how many. Basically, this is a this is a spiritual, I would call it uh, a struggle or a war between matrix forces who want to keep as many souls from moving up in density of consciousness, from being trapped in, let's say, lower third density where they are now, and moving up the ladder of consciousness where they where they would no longer be subject to. And so money was actually invented as a form of control. It's a form of control that if you, if, if you research it, it goes back to the temples of Babylon and even before where it was used by the Mardukian priests as a, where they would re require it as payment for sex with the temple priestesses slash prostitutes where the farmers would bring in their grain. And so it's been mixed up with concepts of God, sex, money, prostitution, and, and it's a form of imprisonment. And as we know from near death experiences, one can't take money with you. You can't take things with you. 
All you can take with you is knowledge and experience and karma. <laughs> yeah. So that's that's where one should concentrate one's one's energy during life. You see, at this time is the coming together of spirituality and science. And this is kind of the culmination of this play, right? Because we are on a timeline that has a script. We're inside a virtual reality. To put it simply plainly, we're inside a video game. It's like you came in, you you have your uh, pound or, you know, whatever it is, and, and you put it in there and you're playing the video game called life, right? And now we're coming to the culmination of that video game. And at the video game, everybody gets to know everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. so one of the purposes that I wrote Omniverse now is that it uses science and it lets everybody know everything. So it's all out there. It's, it's all there to be known now. There, there are no, see, with the new timeline, with the new unity consciousness, the old program of I win, you lose, which is what the Illuminati banked on under the old game. What happened is that on December 21st, 2012, they changed video games. <laughs> well, look, there, everybody who, who in, who has incarnated now actually signed on for this they fought for these places so now why it's so difficult is because they're competing with their own soul within their own consciousness and minds between the grasp of the illuminati program which is you know listen to us sensation program, war, disease, crime, and poverty, sex cells, materialism, fear, and they're just com trying to let go within themselves of the programming of the old timeline and just try, you know, Armageddon is within. So they, they signed up for this and it's their inner process. And so that's what makes it so neat. There is no doubt that we are living in a time of great opportunity and challenge on the planet. Consciousness wants to shift to a higher level of operation. One of light and love instead of our current state of darkness and fear. It's unlike any other time in history. And we are certainly privileged to be incarnate during this period when this massive change is underway. It is a time of expanding consciousness. A time of opening our hearts and minds to ideas that we never thought possible. Such as time travel, teleportation, and life on nearby planets. A major trap that prolongs the existence of duality consciousness in ourselves and in society in general is our believing in and adherence to the matrix created and controlled consensual reality. This reality describes a physical world of lack with humans competing with one another for scarce resources. It embodies the win-lose mentality of the old timeline, where survival of the most ruthless, the most uncaring, is a fact of life. This materialistic worldview enshrines the individual ego, its enhancement, and the accumulation of money and status as the only worthwhile human endeavor. Success at all costs is the credo in this crumbling reality. This system lacks a concrete morality, and whatever actions are necessary to enhance the success of the ego are acceptable, even if those actions damage others, the environment, or mankind in general. It also dictates strict conformance to social norms and severe punishment for those straying outside of the parameters of what is acceptable behavior or acceptable thought Enslavement by the monetary system and fear of violence keeps this reality in place. 
This is the control matrix of the old timeline.